Sure. Hey everybody, how you doing? My name is Paul Lewis. Today we're going to be talking about request animation frame. But before we do that, frankly, I need coffee. Let's go make coffee. We kind of have to talk about clock speeds. Now, every computer on the planet has a clock speed. For example, the one right in front of me has a clock speed of 3.4 gigahertz. Okay, Google, what's 3.4 gigahertz in hertz? 3.4 gigahertz equal 3.4 times 10 to the nine hertz. Okay, Google, what's 10 to the nine? 10 to the nine is one billion. Hmm. So Hertz is the measurement that we use for per second. So for example, 3.4 billion ticks per second, or in the case of a monitor, typically speaking, not always, but typically speaking, they run at 60 Hertz, 60 times a second. So back in the day, when you were doing animations, before request animation frame came along, you would use either set interval or set timeout and probably set interval with your animation function as the callback and then you'd say run this every 16 milliseconds so kind of roughly 60 frames a second and honestly it was fine like it didn't really matter too much but we've tried to do more and more we tried to be better about the ways that we orchestrate animations and we can't always assume that somebody's got a 60 hertz monitor that is where request animation frame starts to enter the story. So the operating system issues this signal called vSync and vSync is its way of saying, I'm gonna push some pixels to the screen. If you've got any pixels to update, now would be a great time. The browser picks up that signal. It runs the kind of frame creation cycle, which is like scrolling or any work in JavaScript and all that kind of stuff that it needs to be able to actually update the screen, which is where we sort of slot into that story because Request animation frame, it's a kind of funny name for a function because what it's really saying is, hey, when vSync fires next, please tell me because I have some visual work to do. It might not actually be an animation, it might be something else visual. So that's why it's a bit of a funny thing. Request animation frame, I mean, naming is hard. We all know that. Request, I think, is reasonable. I mean, I've never known a request be denied for an animation frame but nonetheless it's still polite and I am on board with polite. So you're requesting almost like, it would be better to call it something like request vsync callback or request visual update callback. I don't know, oh, naming is really hard. <laughs> Who names these things? It's your way of saying, okay, vsync is firing. I have some visual updates to do. Let's do them in lockstep with the browser and the operating system. Sometimes when you're looking at request animation frame code, you look inside it and in the callback, it then calls request animation frame again. And that looks almost recursive. It almost looks, hey, this thing is calling itself, which is calling itself, which is calling itself, which is, ah, recursion. What's really happening is the first, imagine the first call, request animation frame, and here's my code. So that doesn't actually execute immediately. No, no, no. What happens is it gets scheduled up so that the next time vsync fires, that code executes. Inside there is the next call to request animation frame. So what's happening is it's saying, okay, I know you're about to run all this other code, great, but could you also tell me when the next vsync fires? Sure, so then it goes again, runs all that code, and it says, by the way, I'm requesting another callback, which happens to be my animate function. Oh. So there you go, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, do give it the thumbs up, that helps me a bunch. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you lovely folk on the flip side.